Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Backing your stuff up. This guy says, my computer doesn't work. The hard drive crashed. What do I do? And the guy on the phone says, did you back up? And he like backs up like, why is it going to blow? No, no, like that's not what he's talking about. You've seen this in my other talk. I use this in every talk because if you're not communicating clearly and people don't understand your lingo, there's going to be a communication barrier and a problem, and they're not going to trust you. So that's why I really try to do things in person, or I do it on Skype, or FaceTime, or I send a video, or I record my screen. You've got to make sure people understand what your process is, or it's just, it's just going to be bad. It's just going to be bad. Um, so the options to back up your things, again, I have different things mapped to different stuff for a reason, but these are the main things, and I'm going to talk about each of them. You've got iCloud, Time Machine, Hard Drive, Carbonite, Google Drive, Dropbox. Okay, iCloud is used for all your Apple stuff. So like your email, your calendar, all that stuff that we did in the very beginning with the calendar, use iCloud to back that up, Okay. Time machine, time machine and hard drive, yes, we use them. Yes, we have a lot of them. But that is, if you can't find something at a local level, it's right there. Um, What I learned the hard way, so time capsule and hard drives is a way to back up your computer. I don't even do this anymore um, through Wi-Fi. Or if it's plugged in, so like at my home office, I have like the big Mac screen, and when I plug in my laptop, my hard drives are plugged in to my screen, so when my computer's plugged in, it's like backing things up, right? So that's at the local level. Now, if our place burns down, if I spill something on it, because I'm constantly eating and drinking around it, um, not the end of the world, because I have it in Dropbox, Google Drive, and then on top of that, I pay for car night, which backs everything up um, just a fourth time. But I will say, so Carbonite, I saved this and put this on my desktop for a reason. Carb, excuse me, Carbonite, um, I actually had to try to use it one day. So one day, back in 2014, January, I'm in, where was I, Chicago? Where, where, what's MD? Maryland. Maryland. I was in Maryland, okay? And I was, I was th- flying through there. I have like a connecting flight. So, and I'm going to teach a tech class, which I do it very differently now. I mean, this was back in 2014. Oh, my God, that was like four years ago. So I have my carry-on, which is so heavy because I have... Multiple computers, multiple iPads, my True Colors books, like all my shit that I need to teach if they lose my luggage. I don't care about my clothes. I care about that stuff, right? So I get to the hotel. I'm like unpacking, and I'm like counting my devices, and I'm missing a computer. (laughs) But it was an older computer that I was phasing out. No big deal. Um, People would like use it that didn't have Macs. And so um, I'm like, well, maybe I just left it at home or maybe it's at the office. Like, that's how many, like, old things I had back then where I'm like, oh, my God, I can't even keep track of my own devices. Mm -hmm. So I went to iCloud.com, and I tried, but it was offline, right? So then I set it up to where whenever someone actually opens the computer, it's going to, like, notify me, right? So two 
or so weeks go by and I'm not like fretting over it. I'm like, it'll turn up. No big deal. I'm sitting in a meeting with Bill Harb. I'll never forget the client I was with um, at 8.24 p.m. And this popped up on my computer. Angela's MacBook Pro was found. And it gives me the flipping like address, right? So this little thing pops up. It's like your Mac's been recorded, you know, and it'll be available. So you can make your computer and your devices scream. So um, I t- and I'm finished, almost finished with the client, and I knew him. I recruited him a long time ago, and he's in healthcare. I was like, um, I'm sorry, I have to go. Like I have to call the police department because my computer and da 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 da. Like so, I, my dumbass. Like I'm hitting like scream, scream, scream. So this computer is just like making these noises, and so. I mean, that was just my reaction, and I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, called the police department, and they're like, oh, if it's a value of over $600, you have to do it in person. And I'm like, do you have kids? He's like, excuse me? Do you have kids? Yeah. Okay. So if someone took your child and kidnapped your child, would you say to that mother, you need to fly back in person? Hell no. That's like my freaking child, okay? And yes, it's password protected, but if somebody got into that, I would lose my life. And then my brother called the airport and got the security footage, and I saw it all. (laughs) There I am on my phone running with headphones, and I'm talking, and some man's like, miss, 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 for a good 120 seconds, clearly two minutes, as all my things are stringing out, and I'm like, oh, shit, hold on a second, and I'm, which that did happen, my zipper broke, and all my stuff trailed out, Mm -hmm. and the first thing to trail out was a computer. And the guy had on like a ski, not a ski mask, but it was cold then. And so he picked it up and it's all on camera, but it's so kind of far away and gritty. You couldn't really prove it. Um, But I had that footage. And so anyway, long story short, um, we got a warrant. They searched the house. They didn't find anything. And the car dealership owner is just like, I don't know what you're talking about. That could have been my son. There could be people sitting outside bumping off my internet. And that's how she got that address. I mean, lying through his teeth. He probably threw my computer in the river as soon as it was screaming because I don't know if he knew what I was doing. I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I don't need the computer. I got everything backed up. What goes around comes around. You still shit. Something bad's going to happen to you. So I'm like, it's done. I didn't lose the computer. I understood what happened. Closed case, right? So then I call Carbonite. I'm like, so, blah, 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 I need to download these files. You know, I had a new computer. I just hadn't pulled them down, and they told me it would take three months to download all my files. Three months. So they're like, okay, well, why don't you selectively sync what you want to download? And I'm like, you know what? This is actually refreshing. I'm going to start over. I'm going to leave it all in Carbonite. If I need to pull it down, I'll pull it down. And there have been a few times where we've done like second and third weddings in the family. And they're like, you did my sister's wedding eight years ago. You know, so I'll go up there. But things, so much has changed in this town. It's not even relevant anymore. So... I'm like, you know what? I've got everything I need locally in Dropbox and Google Drive, so I'm just going to try. Like, it's comforting knowing it's up in the cloud through Carbonite. I've never really accessed it. You know, so it's like all that I feel like happened for a reason to teach me, like, you've got it backed up. If you need it, it's there. If not, no big deal. Um, So hard drives are great to back up locally. And by the way, Time Machine does not automatically work, you guys. I learned that the hard way, too. I lost something, and then I called Apple. Always get Apple Care. Always, 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 always get Apple Care on all your freaking products so they'll freaking answer your questions when you need help so you don't have to pay an arm and a leg. So I call and I'm like, so I can't find something. And she's like, well, um, you need to locate the hard drive that you mapped Time Machine to. I'm like, a what? Like, I'm super confused. She's like, well, do you have time capsule or time? Like, you have to set time machine up. I'm like, why don't they tell you this when you leave the store? Nobody told me to buy a hard drive. Nobody taught me to. She's like, ma'am, I'm sorry. But, like, it, unless you set it up, like, it's not backing up. So, you know, immediately I go out, I buy a hard drive. And then I start learning that hard drives only have so much space. Mm-hmm. And then I start to, I'm like, why is that $30 and that's $200? You know, so it's like I would rather have one hard drive that's $200. Now I have this little guy, this little thing. It's about $500. Um, it's got... 
300 gigabyte. Like a lot of shit is on this. Now, if I lost it, that would suck, but it's still backed up through Carbonite. And so this is another little um, brain for your computer. Like the MacBook Airs, the brain is only so big. But like if you got a Thunderbolt, which is the big computer, you know, the desktop, like for editing and things that take up really big size, um, they operate very quickly. And I don't want anything really living on my computer because it needs to be fast because I'm like, like I'm constantly like doing this. Like, look at how many projects I've got. It's like, you know, I I don't have time for the wheel of death, not even five seconds. So I did research on how to make sure like nothing is living on my computer. And there's like, there's always new little things. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that though is when you start to deal with really big files And you're like, okay, this isn't working anymore. Like, what the hell? What's the alternative? There's always an answer, guys. There's always a way if you're having trouble with something. Trust me. All right. So the other way is you can pay for Carbonite. Again, again, it shouldn't be your go-to, but it's good just for safety. So for Google Drive, um, these are the apps. And again, I love G Suite. I don't use it for everything. The main things, like the little triangle, that's your drive. That's driving all your information. And then the sheets and the docs, the blue app and the green app, it's the same thing as like Word and Excel. And then if you want to do PowerPoint, you can. Pretty much we've gotten to the point where we've got all that software on our computer. We rarely open it. You always want to start new documents inside of Google Drive, okay? You don't want to import. You can. So I tell people, people get freaked out. They're like, oh, you should have all this. I'm like, don't move all your stuff over. Unless you like have events in 2019, you're actively working on them. Don't go back. Just start from today going forward. Otherwise, you're going to make yourself cry, go crazy, go drinking, do drugs. I mean, it's just, it's too much stuff, right? Um, Like, legal drugs, not illegal drugs. Anyway, so just want to clarify that. Um, So with Google Drive, you can also download, just like Dropbox. However, I choose not to do that because we have so much stuff in Google. Again, you only get so much space. So, again, like, I've never really run out. So you see all these tabs up here? We are all very potty trained to start any new document in Google Drive. So I'm going to show you, like, up here, which we're going to talk about shortcuts up here. I have Google Drive. It's the very first thing up here, right? And so here's my drive. Occasionally, I have people share things with me because they learned how to use Google Drive. But then I'm like, well, I want their stuff in my folder. I don't want their folder. So then you can move it to your drive and move it to their folder, which that's getting into too much right now. But you want to treat Dropbox naming system and Google Drive naming system the exact same way. So like our Dropbox and our Google Drive pretty much mirror each other. So you see up here like the 2018 clients. And this is where the template stuff comes in. So... If I go to 2018 clients, um, every client, again, naming, same thing, 41418, first name, last name, client, first name, last name, bridegroom. They all have a Word document. They all have an Excel document, every single person. Now we've gotten into um, paper templates, like this girl, We're doing three or four events for her, and it's getting so complex with just the invites. I'm like, okay, I cannot take this. Like, we have to have a template, and we need to share it, and she needs to get on, and the invitation people need to get on, and we need to potty train them because this is just too much movement. So anytime, like, I'm feeling like, with oh, this is happening with the second one this year, and then the third one, and and I'm like, shit, now they all need a paper template. So it's like, if you have to do the same thing over and over, why not just create a template? Do it yourself. Like, and then you can share it. It's not hard people. So like for this one, I can go in and like, if she was logged in and it's cool, cause up here you can see when people are logged in, you're all a different color. She could be in it. Her mom can be in it. I'm in it. And it's all real time. And then if I needed to pull it up on my phone, you can pull it up on your phone, but you have to have the docs and the sheets 
to edit. I'm constantly editing on the go. I mean, I pull this up in meetings, but I, I, I'm more so I'm on my phone than I am my computer. No, the formatting's not perfect, but I'm going to fix the formatting a week before the wedding and send out a PDF. I mean, it's not, this is not rocket science. Um, it's just, you, you got to have the template mentality. The other thing that clients love, you know, I share it with them so they don't get editing access until they pay and sign a contract. So they can view it all day long and they can screenshot it and try to copy it and take it to another planner. Good luck trying to use it. Even planners that I've coached that have gone through my class, they still don't get it sometimes. Like I had a girl call and she's like, I got my first $100,000 budget. Like I need you to help me. Like where does the money go? And And I'm like, first off, like I don't even know what's important to your client. Like everybody that has a hundred thousand, they spend their money very differently. So I need to know what's their three adjectives. Like, let me look at their Pinterest. And so the whole time she's planning, she's asking me, and then she ends up paying me to do the floor plan and give her some design ideas, teach her how to do, I don't care. And that bride had no clue I was involved. And that keeps happening more and more and more and more. And, more. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, I don't care. As long as I'm helping somebody making the revenue Whatever they need until they can hire someone who is the creative, I'll be that for a little bit, not long term. I don't, I don't need another job. Um, but you can see right here, it's shared with the bride and her mom. You can go to advanced. You can see right here who has editing access, who can comment, and who can view. Who's the owner? You can prevent all these things. But you were able to make those changes because you were the owner of the document. Right. And if someone has editing access, they can make changes too. But you have to give them that. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, so, again, there's a lot of things that you can do on the Internet version versus pulling it down and living on your machine. Again, there's too much information in here. The other super, super, super crucial thing for me, I don't know if this is important to you guys, but on your phone or your iPad, if you're traveling or you know you're going to be in BFE for a meeting and you don't have Wi-Fi for a few hours, again, you got to think ahead. I do this on Sunday, and sometimes I do it the night before for everything I'm doing because shit changes throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And so for, let's see, I go to my work folder, I go to my drive folder, and I'm like, okay, what do I have to do tomorrow? What meetings do I have? And I make sure that I can access everything and, and edit it offline. But you can only do it from here. Like, I don't understand why you can't do it from here. It's so weird. So, like, I open my folder... And then, and then here's all my documents. I go to that, the three little dot, dot, dot. And so you have to turn this on. You have to tell it what to do. Oops, where'd it go? All right, so you can add people. You can share the link, copy the link, send a copy, open in, make a copy available offline. You've got to move it over. So I've kind of potty trained my brain that every single time I start a new document, I just go ahead and do that. And if I'm going to be on a plane and I'm not going to have Wi-Fi for a while, I make sure, sure as shit, I can access my stuff. And then as soon as I get to Wi-Fi and I land, everything's uploaded, right? So you can start it. You can rename. You can move. Again, like there's so much you can do from this little device, right? So easy. Same thing with the iPad. Um, and again, the naming is so, 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 so important. And there's all kinds of shortcuts. So like right here, I can just tap once. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's Dropbox. Tap twice. Boop. And you can rename from here, you can move it. So if it needs to move to another folder, you can download it. So each time before I send out a PDF, like when I'm as done as it's gonna get a week before an event, I download it to Word. Yes, but I don't leave my computer. And I format it so it looks nice, and then I export it into a PDF. And then now we're getting to the point where I can't e email out our files because they're too damn big because I'm having to put a lot of pictures in there to remind people what the hell we're doing because there's so much we're doing now. And so I just share the Dropbox link. So their timeline in the PDF still lives in their Dropbox folder, and then I do two fingers, right-click, copy the link, 
And then when I go to an, an email, what I try to do so it just looks prettier, I'll show you guys. Um, do y'all know how to link a link? <laughs> Let me show you. So basically, it's like, all right, so I'm copying the link right here. I, I don't know what I'm... This is the Hermitage Hotel AV form, right? So it's Hermitage Hotel AV form. Okay, so I'll teach you how to do that. Then you take three fingers, highlight it, or you can triple tap, not click, tap. And then you go to link, add link, command V, which is paste, hit OK. So it's a live link, right? So doesn't that look better than that? Mm-hmm. Right? So all these little shortcuts help. Um, so how do you determine if you want to put something in Google Drive or in Dropbox? So if I'm editing it okay, constantly and I'm sharing it with multiple people, it's in Google Drive. Dropbox is just to drop things in. And again, there's people in my class that will like kind of fight. I mean, not that anybody's fighting, but it's like, well, I've trained like my brother. He's like, you told me to put everything in Google Drive. I'm like, that was all your shit starting out because I'm editing it. But like, we also want to get you Dropbox because all your different logo formats that you're trying to drag into social media and I need to change the sizes. You can't do that from Google Drive. You can do it, but it's just like five more steps. So I'm like, let's move all your pictures from your website and stuff for social media into a Dropbox, into a business. Business, and then there's a folder inside business that says logos, website photos, or photos, website, whatever. Like, once you get on this system, you know how your brain needs to see things, right? And so, again, if you have to pick one, freaking pick one. I just think it's easier to access things, you know, in a certain way. Um, He didn't want to change. That's fine. But I'm like, watch how many more steps you have to do. He's like, that's no big deal. I'm like, in 12 months, let's talk. Because you're not busy yet. You have time. You have no clients. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) But when you get busy, it's like, I need shortcuts. I need to know, like, what do I need to do? Um, Okay. Let me go back to this. Paper contracts. Who still does paper contracts? Anybody? Oh, Curry. Listen, you and I have got to talk. I know. I know. know. Okay. Okay. So, we we used to use DocuSign. Then we changed to HelloSign, I think, because it was cheaper. Basically, you can have your con. I think in HelloSign, you can, like, download one template. And then, and and again, there's all different kinds of things. There's um, EasySign was the very first thing that I used. And then after EasySign, I used DocuSign. Now we use HelloSign. They're all online. They all sync with Dropbox. They all sync with Google Drive. So when a client, we, we do send it from HelloSign. It's an app. We put the email in. We send it to them. They fill it out on their phone with their finger. They don't have to print it. They don't have to fax it. That's like, no, we didn't, no, what are you talking about? There's no freaking excuses. I've learned not to lift a finger until someone has signed. Because I would go and like get super excited, and then I never hear from them again. So I've learned the hard way. Um, I still catch myself doing it sometimes, where I know for sure the event's happening. This happened with my one of my friends. Like they hired me to do this thing in their barn for a bachelorette bachelor party. It was a bunch of dudes, and like I know them. I do events at their house all the time, and then you know, of course, they paid me a retainer, meaning it's not refundable. And then I put together all the design and get all the quotes, and they're, they've already blown through their retainer. Because we keep up with our hours. And then the dad calls me and he's like, they decided to go to a different state. They're they're not coming here now. So do I get my money back? I'm like, seriously? Now, he didn't sign a contract yet because it was still hanging in hello sign. But he wasn't, he got, he's a business owner. He gets it. I'm like, no. But like, you need to sit and go through your stuff and make sure your people are signing your stuff. Like, luckily, I didn't have any trouble with that. But still, I'm like, you have your Dropbox. I did have to (laughs) take a warrant on somebody's rest last year because the couple broke up. And on my forms, both clients have to sign because I had a very clever, uh, 
what was it called? Scammer, I guess. It was a bride and a groom. The bride signed the contract. The groom, the checks were in the groom's name and he signed it. And when all the vendors sued them, I was just subpoenaed to court to answer questions. Some of the stuff didn't hold up because the bride signed the contract and the groom wrote the checks and it didn't have his name on the contract. Isn't that effed up? Anyway. And then they filed bankruptcy, so nobody got anything. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying. So if you're sending something over, like I have something that I need, like other family members I'm doing a probate on a state to sign right now. So I can put it in Dropbox or Google Drive and send it over so how am I getting them to, to HelloSign? So you actually put it into HelloSign first. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if you were using HelloSign, your template would be there, mm-hmm. right? And then you just simply put in the email and you check a few boxes. It's like, make this available for 24 hours. Make this available for 48 hours. Send a reminder in 24 hours. If they open the link, but then they don't sign it and send it, they get a reminder. Like, there's all this amazing automation. Amazing. But they have to have that to sign it or no? So, yeah. No, no, no. They don't have to have the app. put it on their phone. And yep. Or- they sign it, and then you get a notification if you want it telling you, here's here it is back. It's going to send you a PDF, and then it's your job to put it in their folder. Okay. Now, if you if you don't have folders set up yet, you can always log into HelloSign. There's all, all your sign contracts. And it'll tell you, like, what's out for review, what's been opened. I mean, I kind of don't worry about it about it anymore like we we look at it I don't know once a month you know j- just to and see DocuSign works similar. And it's same, same thing kind of basically like DocuSign does yep yeah. email. exact same thing okay, okay. Recap for Google Drive. Um, again, editing, 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 and share. You should never, ever, ever email anymore a Word document or an Excel document to somebody to fill out and they email it back to you. It completely eliminates your email. Back and forth for save changes, right? Because it's in Google Drive, all the, they're all real time and you don't have to hit save. That's the other difference between Dropbox is with Google Drive, you're not hitting save. It's automatically saving. Um, the other thing is I tracked this and it cut our emails down about 300 a day during busy season, just just by sharing Google Drive and Dropbox. Now, again, it takes potty training to tell people, put it in the Dropbox. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on angelaprofit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to angelaprofit.com.